Usher, I'm back. It's wedding season and I've got loads of wedding projects for you in my next round of videos. Right now we're working on a 3D wedding cake. If you saw a previous video, I decorated um, a large wedding cake cookie, about four by five inches in 2D. And I've since propped that particular one up into 3D using the sandwiching technique. And here's an example. This is the one I decorated in the other video. I'm going to be propping up a slightly different one in this video, but I just wanted to show you how to bring these flat cookies into larger-than-life format. These are great as bridal favors, uh, takeaway gifts, favors at a wedding, you name it. So lots of possibilities here. You could even cluster several on different cake stands and make a centerpiece. So lots of fun possibilities. I've got some already, you want to start with already decorated cookies. Again, I have a previous video where I showed how to do this one in front of me, which is stamped and painted and got many different techniques on it. This particular one has been iced and has a needle point pattern on it. And then I've used royal icing transfers for the flowers and little wafer paper doodads for the embellishments. I'm going to show you a little bit about how I apply those as we go forward. So already decorated fully dry for this project. As delicate as these look, I still think we can get them together in 2D. I always work on bubble wrap for this. So one is going to be form the back side of the cookie, and the other is going to be the front side. We're going to sandwich them. One thing I did before starting, actually even before icing the cookies, is I filed down the bottoms of the cookies so they were completely flat using my microplaner. And if you see that there's any kind of bowing in the, in the bottom here, you can file that flat. And that will just ensure that they stand flatter with less gap going forward. So we've got our two wedding cake cookies. One is going to be placed top down so I can glue on it. And the other piece you'll need for this is just a base to mount the cookie on. I've used an oval cutter. This is again about six inches long, six or seven inches long. It just has enough clearance to clear the bottom of the wedding cake. You could also use an eyelet lace doily, which is what we talked about in another video, which is under this cookie in front of me. So again, lots of possibilities here. You can get creative. This is primarily an assembly video, as you might have noticed. So we're going to get started with that. I've got my handy thick royal icing glue to stick these pieces together. And I'm going to be pretty generous here. And I've matched the icing to the color of the cookie so that if any peeks out the sides, it's not going to show. And I chose to make this cookie the top cookie because it's slightly bigger than the one in the back. And also, these little paper flower, these paper, paper florets are quite delicate, so they most certainly wouldn't work on the bottom. They would probably break. So at this juncture, I would let this dry. The key thing, again, with the sandwiching technique and doing anything vertical is to make sure that the bottom pieces sit flush with one another. Even before I put these together, I chose these pieces so that they were a nice match, too, so that you wouldn't see too much of the cookie behind peeking out in the front. Okay, so I let that dry thoroughly, but before it completely dries, I want to do a couple of little embellishments. I want to add another little florette to the top. And this is cut out of, not wafer paper rather, but a frosting sheet. You could use wafer paper too, but I've used frosting sheets here. They're a little more thick and less see-through. And they will dry out if exposed to the air, which is why they're in this sealed container at all times. I actually find that the wafer paper cuts better off its backing sheet, so you want to pull that off. The frosting sheets will cut better that way. Slide it in, and then simply press. It's hard to get through that backing sheet with some of these craft punches. And in fact, it's hard for me to get through this one without standing up. There, I need a little more leverage on it. So there, I've got a neat little shape. And then I can bend this while the frosting sheet is still pliable into all different shapes and forms. So let me move this back over a little bit. I've got one here that I just want to insert up here as a little decorative element on the cake. And for this, I'm going to turn to my white royal icing glue so that if any pops out the front and onto the icing, the blue icing, it's easier to clean off. need a little bit more in there. I need to actually see where I'm putting it there. So that'll dry into place. And once this is dried, normally let this sit about half an hour before I would mount it on the base. But since we don't have the luxury of time, we're going to go ahead and move forward and try to get it up on its pedestal. 
This little base here, again, fully decorated before you start and completely dry. This was top coated in purple, stenciled in white, and then I applied blue dot work and white dot work. It's a little messed up in the middle, you might notice. That's because I did some blue beads down the center, and when I was doing a test run of how this would fit, those little blue beads were kind of interfering with the even placement of this cake. So try to keep the area where the cake's going to go pretty clear of stuff, just so that it so, so that it sits squarely and flat. Okay, so more royal icing glue going on the bottom. Here I could use white or brown. Probably should have used white because if I do have to move this, it's not going to. It would mess up the cake stand less. And I want to center it here. And if I've properly aligned the bottoms, and the same principle holds in most all of these 3D sandwich constructions I do, it should almost stand on its own. It's leaning back a little bit. So I am going to prop it in place with some wooden blocks. until it's completely dry. And because my, and because my stand here, I just want to be careful of that needle point because it's kind of fragile. I don't want to apply too much pressure on that. So we're going to prop that until it's completely dry and then we're going to come back and do some finish work around the base of the cookie, some more flowers and so on. Okay, it's been about a half an hour and this guy's still sitting here, stabilized with those wood blocks. This looks to be, I'm just going to test it here, it looks to be pretty darn dry. So I'm going to remove these blocks. And you can use tall drage containers. There are different ways to prop. And I was successful in not messing up the needle point too, which is crucial. OK, so now the last step is just finishing off the base. I have a zigzag of flowers. They're kind of going in an opposing side, so I'm going to put some down here. So what I'm going to do down here is add another little doodad, one of those cutouts, those frosting sheet cutouts about here. And this also hides the little gap. There's a little gap at the base of the cake to the little pedestal it's on, the little plate it's on. And I'm using white glue in all cases here just because it's going to be easier to move around if I should need to. These are beautiful little royal icing transfers. I happen to get these from Fancy Flowers because they're so sweet. They're one of my favorite suppliers of these kinds of things, though you can make them yourselves. We'll be working with some larger royal icing roses in my wedding bouquet video that I actually made, which I will be showing in a subsequent video. Next up are flowers. I do want to put one up. Actually, I'm going to start one up here to cover the base of this. This is why I need to be eye level to see what I'm doing. To cover the base of that little doodad, let's mix it up and put one of these guys here. Again, I'm not pressing too hard on the lace because I do not want to mess it up. And I could go as far as putting one a little bit here in the foreground, which I think I'll do. And again, just securing them with thick royal icing glue. The thicker it is, the faster it'll dry. And then the finishing touch is to just fill in around there with, with some leaves. And this is one of those rare circumstances, again, where I use the pastry bag with a metal tip because I want a particular shape, in this case, case a leaf shape. This is a tip number 352 filled with a thick moss green royal icing. And I'm just squeezing it to make sure it's flowing nicely. You want to use a thick icing that holds its shape. I'm going to just tuck some leaves in behind these flowers. These can also act as extra glue to keep the flowers in place. I noticed this guy was moving around a little bit. So I'm pushing to kind of get a base going just to make the leaf, get it fat, and then I slowly ease off on the pressure and pull up to get a point. This icing may be a tad too thick because it's not ending with a nice, nice fine point. It's adding, ending with kind of a clumpy point, but I think I can live with it. And I want to add a few more to this side. The easiest way to access those is from this direction. So I'm rotating the cookie. You can see the back side. Hopefully it looks good from that direction too. And you'd want to repeat any finishing touches 
on the back of the cookie as well. I'm just going to do the one face for you so you get the idea. And let's see, what can I think if I can fit in one more leaf in front of the lace, it'd be super. Got kind of quite a few. I'm going to put one more in the foreground just to kind of balance it out. And there you have it, 3D wedding cake. In our next video, we'll be actually moving this cake up onto a little pedestal. We'll be creating 3D cake pedestals, if you will, for presenting these cakes or for presenting other sweets. Till then, live sweetly. Mm -hmm.